Good morning to my brothers and sisters in Christ, and those of us who are live screaming, and those of us who are here with me today at Glory to God Ministry. I pray this week has been a great week, and that you've experienced and continue to the leadership of God our Father, who shepherd our lives, and he guides us through life. Life is real. Life has all the realities that we face every day. So I pray that you have had an experience, a glorifying experience, a manifestation of our Heavenly Father. An honor to be here, alive and well, in this day and time, to serve, to be in bonds with the Lord. And I pray that you are walking in that allegiance, in that commitment, in that type of conviction that God, your Father, is your Lord. He's your master, and he is your all in all throughout life. So today, in our word, I want us to go ahead and get started. I don't want to delay, but I want to encourage us to maintain a confidence constantly, always, um, without any compromise. Uh, this is relationship has to do with a high call of God uh, into a realm of the Spirit. And Paul said he pressed towards the mark of the high call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus holds the wealth in which you and I have taken passage into to have a right, a R-I-T-E, a right of passage through the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of God, through by the blood life of Jesus Christ. You pledged your life. You committed your life. You're in bonds with him. And he's in bonds with you. And you have to know this. And in this relationship, I kind of quote the day and ask you to take a note of Ephesians chapter 1, when Paul talked about how I beseech you that you, uh, he talked about himself as a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you would walk worthy of your vocation. And this walk with God is certainly a vocation, that you are to walk skillfully uh, with the knowledge and wisdom of Almighty God our Father. And to know that you're dealing with one Lord, one God, one faith, and one baptism. So when you read chapter 4, you're going to see in Ephesians chapter 4, he's going to talk about you're in a legion already. You're in faith. You're in a commitment already with one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You cannot have two. And we've been sharing. And, if, and this is, again, take note of the note that I give you because in Matthew 6, 24, you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't have two. You can't have an allegiance. You can't have a rite of passage with God and a rite of passage with mammon. Mammon defines as the seven demonic influence of the seven princes of hell, the underworld. The underworld is very organized, and this is where we've been looking in the gospel, Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus is being tempted of the devil, and he's trying to lure his soul away from a position or a place that he stands in. And brothers and sisters, we know that the Bible teaches us not to give a place to the devil. It's important that you know, each and every one of us know, you're in a position, you're in a place that's heavenly, it's spiritual, you and I are the sons of God, uh, it's more than the color of your skin, it's more than your political parties, this is all spiritual, and it's most ranking, it's most infinite than any other order of power. You're in the greatest order of power which God had given us to have through Christ Jesus. So you and I have already taken rite of passage into the relationship through sanctification, through the baptism. You made a pledge, you made a vow to walk with God through the life of his son, Jesus Christ. And so today as we talk and, and yet connect what we've been teaching about, because your conviction through the knowledge of the truth and it's important that you be skillful in your Bible, be skillful in the knowledge of the truth. The truth is what Christ says that he is. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the light. So therefore, this day we sit in here, you, if you're in Christ, you are already taking passage on a road that's narrow, that's straight, that's going to lead you to Christ. You can't travel the two roads. There's only one road. One road is broad. Many that there be that go therein. That road have no standard, but the road that you've chosen to walk in is a narrow road. It's straight, and it's strict. It's righteous. It's going to get you all the way home. It's a beaten path into life. So now Christ is being tempted. I'm going to go back there just for a moment, back in Matthew, because we're going to talk about the glory. And this is how you and I are going to have to watch out as we travel, as we day by day, 
uh, we're going to walk with our hearts and our minds in a commitment to serve God by knowledge, by the counsel of his word, by the wisdom of his, of his word. You and I must be bond of being, bound, being in bound to him uh, with the word of God. You take the keys of the kingdom and you bind yourself to his word. You bind yourself to the knowledge. You bind yourself to the understanding of all the doctrines and statutes and judgments of God because of the relationship that God looked for us to have with him through Christ Jesus. So let's look back in Matthew's gospel, chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse 8, and then we're going to go to Colossians, chapter 1, and verse 25. And I'll walk through this as carefully as I possibly can because the time that we're in, when I talk to you about the different sororities, I talk to you about the fraternities, I talk to you about whatever it is that you pledge yourself to, to go look and search and see what you had to do to become a part of those different uh, organizations, um, what you had to pledge. So you had to take a rite of passage to come into those different organizations. And, and, and the gospel is going to let us know you can't have both. Now, Jesus is being tempted because Satan is now trying to give him another rite of passage through this temptation. He's going to try and come after him through the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So in Matthew Gospel, in chapter 4, in verse 8, it says, and again, the devil takes him into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now he's bringing this to Jesus, and he's bringing him to show him all the kingdom of the world the inhabitants of men's and women's and people who've already pledged their life to him. He's showing him all the constitutions and governments and orders and fraternities and people who already pledged their life to his kingdom. All that he is showing Jesus at this time, he's showing him the organization and the constitutions of things. If you look back at any organization that you're part of, go look and see when was it organized? What was the uh, uh, standard? What was the philosophy of it? What is, is it that you're pledging to? Why is it that you're having to do this? And normally there's a reason when you go in and you pledge to a lot of these fraternities. We talked about Freemasonry. We talked about the Eastern Stars. We talked about the uh, Alpha, uh, Alpha Phi, Kappa, Delta, Delta Zeta. We talked about all these different fraternities and sororities along with Illuminati, along with the Freemasonry. We talk about all these different things. We talk about even the Ku Klux Klan. Everyone has to take a rite of passage. You can't have a rite of passage into the kingdom of God and a rite of passage with the devil. Now, the devil may let you try and walk with God and him, but God certainly will not. He will not do it. So he's trying to offer Jesus this place that Jesus can see what he governed. He can see the organization and the decor of it, the decoration of it, the pledges of it, the symbols of it, the images of it. Let me slow down because I want you to get this. Everything he shows Jesus, it has an image behind it. Everything, all of his organization is, is always, it is always committed with some type of graven image. If you're a part of a sorority, there's an graven image. And that's why a lot of the times they put those images on their clothes, be it you brand your body, whatever you do, and all the things that you have to do, now because you're believers, then God is addressing the church to those of us who are in the Freemasonry, those of us in the church. That's from the pastors and apostles and teachers and evangelists because Satan is now showing what he's ruling over. He showed him the kingdom. The word kingdom has to do with the rule and reign of what he oversight. He let Jesus know that you can have this and the glory of it. You can have the abundance of it. You can have the riches of it. You can have the wealth of it. You can have the praise of it. You must be willing to understand, I'm going to ask you to do something. So what he's trying to now is take a place in Jesus' life. He needs Jesus to give him a place. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Body of Christ, believers, you are to give no place to the devil. I don't care where you're trying to go in life. I don't care how successful you're trying to be. You got to know that your wealth and your riches is in Christ Jesus, all right? Your life is abundantly blessed through Christ Jesus. You got to get this into your heart. Your life is fully blessed, not for time, but forever. 
See, everything that Satan is about to show Jesus, showing Jesus how to do with a clock called time. Because Satan knows that he has a what? A short time. So he's now trying to get man to focus on now versus eternity. But the one he's talking to, he already have a kingdom. He's already Lord. Now he's going to walk out the behavior before you and I, walking in the, living in the flesh, but walking in the spirit. So I want to call us to a place to understand it's time for us to walk in the spirit. Whatever you pledge to, I want you to go back and look. What is that I pledge to? Remember all the rituals. Remember all the things you had to go through in order to get there. And notice the behavior, the proudness, the boastness. And know that you and I, when we got involved with these different sororities and fraternities, you did it for a reason. What was the motive? What drew you into this place? A lot of us didn't know that it was not to be a part of our life. I'm going to show you this in a minute because you are only to pledge to one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. God will meet and supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Keep that in mind. Your God, my God, our Father is going to make sure all of your needs is met, your security is met, your food is met, your housing is met, your soul is met. Every need in your life is going to be met. Those who pledge to your political parties and you act as though they can take care of you, they can't. Those of us who have looked to man, man can only be certain things to you, but he can't be all things to you. Almighty God, he don't slumber, he don't sleep. So now what this spirit wants Christ to do is give him a place. He's going to ask for it in verse 9. He says unto him, all these things will I give thee. So there's things that Jesus saw. He saw humanity, but he saw humanity that is actually an ungodly people pledging to the dark world. The ungodly human race has pledged their life to the dark world. Now, in order for Jesus to become a part of this, he's going to let Jesus know, this is what I want you to do if you want these things. If you want success, if you want wealth, if you want riches, if you want to have the best house and the best cars, and yada, 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 and on and on and on. Now, your soul is going to have to give him a place. He asks Jesus, he says, now, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now, when you bring your body down, you bring your whole being down. When you bring your body down, you bring your soul, your spirit, and your mind to pledge and to vow to be a part of a kingdom of darkness. So now, we have two kingdoms. You have the kingdom of darkness that he's presenting to Jesus Christ. He letting Jesus know there's some things that you can have. There's success you can have. There's wealth you can have. There's prosperity you can have. There's promotion you can have. There's power you can have. That you can have these things, and I will give it you so you can have what you want while you live. But I need to have a place in your life. You remember, saints, give no place to the devil. The first Adam gave a place to the devil. This Christ now is now called the last Adam, but notice he refused to give a place to things that are temporary. Things are but for a moment. The pleasure that you have, the promotion that you get, the success that you have, that he is able to give you by be, being a part of Illuminati. What he'll give you if you're part of Freemasonry. 33rd, 32nd degree. He gives you things in the earth realm that you can have power in the abundance. So he shows him all the inhabitants of the world and those who committed themselves unto him. We're going to use for the example, Herod was a part of his kingdom. Pilate was a part of his kingdom. The church, the people who called for Christ to be crucified was a part of his kingdom. And that's the thing about this. Not only sorority is a part of his kingdom, the church, there's a lot of people saying they're in Christ, is a part of the kingdom of darkness. Now, Revelation 18, take a note. Revelation 18 and 1, it tells us to come out from among her, my people. We're talking to the body of Christ. Those who have pledged to Christ have also pledged to her. Okay? Her. Notice, even in our United States of America, when you pledge to that flag, you need to know what you're doing. When you pledge allegiance, when you commit, when you subject your heart to that flag, that you do anything for that flag because it's an American flag, but what did I pledge to? I want us to look at everything and bring everything into question that you pledged to because when that come in between you and God, 
You need to know. You only have one Lord, one God, one faith, one baptism. God is not going to share you and him with no one else. We live in a country we call a great America, a democracy. Okay? But who is Lord over this kingdom here? Look at the exclusion and inclusion. Look at the who's who that's a part of this system that we're part of. So I want to understand that what we look at is not always what it appears to be. And then when I look back at the year of September, I think the 17, 1786, when the Constitution was put together, their philosophy was put together, their belief was put together, and they made it become law. A lot of people was not included in the Constitution. So therefore, we're forever going back to make amendments to the Constitution because we're fighting for a right to be a part of something that never included us. So therefore, was that establishment of God? Though we put in God we trust, but what God are we talking about? Is it a God of righteousness? Today is one of the most segregated days in the United States. You have your white churches, your black churches, your Baptist churches, your Methodist churches, all this confusion that we see when there's only one God, one Lord, and one faith, and one baptism. I say this because I want your mind to grow up and come to a place to understand that if you're going to glory, you're going to glory in the things of God. Amen? If you're going to walk around and brag and boast, you're going to brag and boast about God. Man will let us down. Politicians will let you down. Uh, leaders that's in your life, if they're not really in the kingdom, they're going to certainly hurt our feelings and disappoint us because they have no allegiance with God. That's why we've seen the mammon uh, influence in the church using the images of Benjamin Franklin, the George Washington, the U U Ulysses Grant, that the church, is, a lot of it is built on prosperity that have to do with the earth realm. So I'm saying all these things because I really want you to understand that you made an agreement, you made a promise, you made a promise to God to serve him and him what? Only. Him only. Now, let's look, because again, the glory. Do you want the glory? What glory do you want? You can glory in things that's temporal, or you can glory in that which is eternal. Now, let's go over to Colossians chapter 1 in teaching this today. Again, for those of us, I want you to hear and then go study and go examine. If you're Freemasonry, go look and see what you have to do concerning the most worship of master. You can't have a right into the blood of Christ and then turn and join yourself to somebody else. But look at the mystery of the kingdom in Colossians chapter 1. Let's look at verse 25. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. This is the apostle's writing. And this is what it says. He says, whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God which, give, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. He's talking about I've been given this place or position to serve, he says, according in harmony with this dispensation or this stewardship of God. See, I have a stewardship. Every man and woman of God have a stewardship of God. And Paul is talking about his stewardship and his obligation, he said, of God, which is given to me for you. For what reason? To fulfill the word of God. He said, even the mystery which has been given, hid from ages, from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. That's us. He said, to whom God would make known what is the what riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles. What is the, what is the uh, uh, um, understand, what is the riches of the glory? What is the abundance of the glory? What is the uh, uh, things that you can brag on that have to do with the glory? Having to understand that what is the honor, what is the blessing, what is the splendor that you and I have? What is that you have that the world don't have? What is that you have that Kappa don't have? What do you have that Cigna don't have? There has to be a difference here, because when the Lord gives you a blessing, the blessing do what? Make rich and add no sorrow. But what the enemy is going to give, it has an end to it. But you have to bow and pledge the thing that is certainly against God. Now, understand that to whom would, verse 27 again, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory 
of his mystery among the Gentiles. God making it known, like Satan is trying to make it known to Jesus about his kingdom and about his glory. Well, Paul said our responsibility and our stewardship is to make known the mystery, that which is hidden from any and everybody, the mystery, he says, among the Gentiles. Gentiles are people who were without God. We were a people at one point in time without God. He said, which in Christ, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So now, is Christ in you? That's the hope of glory. That's the abundance. That's the riches. That's the wealth. That what makes you to be in such imminent place, and you have already in faith, or you have an allegiance with God. So is Christ in you, and Christ is called the hope of glory, the hope of abundance riches, the hope of eternal life. The hope of peace that surpasses all understanding. The hope. Every day you wake up with the hope, which is the glory of God. God's glory is so important. I want you to understand because Satan is now trying to give him the kingdom and the glory of the kingdom. And there's people who walk away from the abundance and the riches of, that's in Christ Jesus. And therefore, you find that we are not bragging and boasting about the glory of God. We're not bragging or boasting about God will keep me from falling. We're not bragging and boasting that angels have charge over to me to keep me in all of my ways. We brag in our Second Amendment because we believe a gun can keep us, not angels. We believe that man can protect us, not God. You can't have an allegiance to God and have an allegiance to the devil. Okay? So understand that you have a position already that's been afforded, and God wanted everybody to understand what was his hope, what is his expectation that he wanted to be revealed in us, which is Christ Jesus. That's the richness, that's the wealth, that's the abundance, that's the fullness, because he come to give us life, and he come to give it how? More abundantly. It's the fullness of grace. So I want to understand these things, because you're going to pledge to really follow God and love him and keep him first and foremost. If not, you're going to come in with your Sahar, your Sarah, your sisters and your brothers, and the Ku Klux Klan, and every secret organization that's out here that's dark, and even the churches that's involved with it, will come in with no allegiance to God. Therefore, it sets everyone up for the Antichrist. It sets everyone to believe the next move of darkness. So I gave you Revelation 18.1 so you can see that the church has actually bought into what the glory of the world is all about. It's temporary, it's transitory, it's only going to last for a moment. I don't want to go too fast. I want you to get this. He says, I'm going to read verse 27, to whom God would make known, he's going to unveil and reveal what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. What is the glory when people look at you? And they look at you and they see that, wow, you have an abundance of peace. You have an abundance of strength. You have an understanding. You face life and walk through the fires, but they don't burn. You face life, you walk through the rivers, and they don't overflow you. Or you go through, like Job did, in such level of maturity that you can take it and yet hold on to God. Because of the wealth and the riches that, that Job actually found in God, he didn't, he didn't care what happened. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So the glory that you must understand that your mind must be adorned with and arrayed with and the decor of being dressed really in Christ, the glorious light, the glorious truth, the glorious path, the glorious home in eternity. Everything about you has to do with the abundance of what God has afforded you to have, not just for now, but forever. Then he says, whom we preach warning every man, warning, notifying every man. And that's what this is about, trying to notify saints. You have made pledges. You vowed to something that you shouldn't be vowed to. Matthew 6, 24 says, you cannot serve God in mammon. Why do Christ have to preach that? Because apparently we are trying to hang out with two. Why? Both brings glory. Mammon will bring you glory. Mammon bring glory that is transitory. Mammon bring riches that is transitory. You remember when the giant went to fight David? How he disdained David? And he railed on Israel? He went out in his glory. He arrayed himself with a coat of mail. He had his legs covered up with metal. He had his helmet on and a sword. He had someone to carry his own shield. And David said, look, I come out to you with the highest level of glory. I come out against you in the name of the Lord. It don't get any better than that. 
Jesus' name is above every name. Glory in that. Glory in that. And understand the mystery of the kingdom is given for us to understand that you and I to glory because of your position in Christ. Don't give up your position for temporary glory. It's so much that Satan will give people to glory in, but at the end it's going to be fleeting. And tomorrow this time, you're going to find it is vanished, it is gone. You'll find it don't have the ability to continue on and to go on. Though it give you riches, it won't last. Though it give you strength, it won't last. Though it give you fame, it won't last. Everything God gives us is from everlasting to what? Everlasting. From what? Everlasting to everlasting. So it's calling our minds to come up and gird up because Paul is saying here, I'm here to warn you. I'm here to let you know because you are looking in other places and I'm not there. You're depending on others and I'm not there with the others that you're depending on. He says, 28, he said, in teaching every man in all wisdom, all divine wisdom, all divine understanding, every instructional teaching is that my job as a steward is to bring this knowledge and to go against things that perhaps you have established yourself in. There are some things that you pledged to, you took right a passage into it. I want to encourage you to come off that path because God is not going to put up with you and another lover. Remember again, he's not going to contend for you. If you want, if you want to walk as, a, as an Alpha Phi, walk as an Alpha Phi. But God is not going to have you walking with him in Alpha Phi. God's not going to have you being a Ku Klux Klansman and an Alpha Phi, no, and Kappa Phi. Notice that the Ku Klux Klan dressed themselves in white robes. Notice they have a red cross. They got their, their, their brand. They branded themselves. And notice everybody who pledged have to brand themselves with some type of image. You put it on your cards. It's the clothes you put on. It's the color you put on, which is symbolic of something that you're suggesting for somebody to know and to see who you are. But understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Because when demons look at you, they see that you're already branded with a seal of God in your forehead. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, I believe, where you'll get that learning, or 13, where the time that you began to accept Christ, you were sealed with the spirit of promise. I think it's Ephesians 1 and 13. You are sealed already. There's a brand already up on you. And I'm calling you to this understanding and warning you, if you pledge to some secret organization, I want to encourage you to repent and come away from that because the glory that God has don't compare to the glory that the world gives. You can't have God and have the devil at the same time, okay? That's just how it goes. The glory that you walk in, the God that you serve, you don't have to sell your soul. You don't have to sell your soul. You don't have to be beaten. You don't have to be urinated on. You don't have to go get in a casket. You don't have to walk around hitting, hitting the floor with a stick. All of this is rubbish. It has an end to it. But what God gives you is from everlasting to everlasting. That's your Bible, and that's what I want you to understand. You should study. So Paul said, I'm warning man and teaching every man in all wisdom. When I give you doctrine, it's the wisdom of God's word. He said that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Wasn't Job perfect? Wasn't Job sound? When Job got hit, what was his glory? What was his abundance? What was his strength? When Job got hit with the storm, he lost all the wealth and riches that he had. But the one who had it all, Job never let go of the glory of God. That's the mystery when I look at you. It's the hope of glory, Christ in you. It doesn't get any better than Christ because Christ is now Lord of Lords and King of Kings. When you start to exalt any earthly organization and bond with it, then you are now moving to give Satan a place in your life. Your brothers that you are pledging to, when they come around and then Christ brothers is there, the body of Christ is there, you're having to choose which one you're going to hang out with. They branded you with a color that you proudly wear. Symbols and things that's on your car. I want you to go back and look. And it always go back to the Baphomet. It always go back to the pledges and things that you're doing that we really shouldn't be doing. Because we've done it ignorantly. And that's the case in most, in most of our lives. What we've done, we've done it ignorantly. Because we want to be a part. We want to be successful. We're talking about presidents, congressmen, judges, lawyers, pastors, preachers. Many people is in bed with her. So, I quoted this, but I want us to go, this and go there in just a minute. Get ready for Revelation 18 and 1. He says, I'm going to finish reading this. 
He said that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, wherein I also labor, striving according to his work, working, which worketh in me mightily. With every effort do I reach you today. With every effort today I say to you, I need you to listen. I need you to study. I need you to pick up your Bible. I need you to understand, did you get baptized? See, Christ has been baptized. He's already pledged his life. He was at John's baptism. He took right of passage through the sanctification, denying his flesh, bearing his flesh. John wanted to baptize, be baptized by Jesus. Jesus said, no, let us fulfill the scripture. It's my time to take passage because I'm about to establish the kingdom of God and his glory. And y'all remember this. When you pray, Jesus said, lead me not into temptation. He said, but deliver me from sin. For thine is the kingdom. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Pay attention to that and make a note because we're dealing with the glory that's supposed to rest upon our life. The glory of God that should be upon your house. The abundance of riches. Every day, daily bread, daily provision. God is fighting our battle. Racism will have always been around. Injustice has always been around. But everyone who trusts in God, God always delivers. Remember Daniel was put in the fire? Did the fire burn? They went to the lion then. Did the lion eat them up? Because they operate with God who all the glory belonged to. Remember, he says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. What's going to happen when you get your mind settled and set? That's why Paul said, I warn you. I'm teaching you. You got to get back to God. Not playing church games, religious games. It's a relationship of fidelity where you and I trust God. It's the glory when I look at you. It's the glory that he sees. What's the glory? Christ in you. The hope of glory. When demons look at you, it's Christ in you. The hope of glory. All the glory that the world gives is a temporary, transitory, but for a moment, it ticks in and it ticks out. You have it today, but tomorrow is gone. You brought nothing into this world, and you can't truckload none of it out of here. God help us. Are you going to pledge your life back to God because you can't serve two masters? So he's talking to the church because the church is mingling. So understand this. Let's go now to Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18, and look at verse 1. Because we're going to see, he's trying to get Christ to buy into a system that he, he said was given to me. He said, all this was given me. When the first Adam did what he did, because the first Adam had dominion. The first Adam had the glory of God. He had to rule. He had to trust the God in the garden. God trusted him. He had the abundance of so many things. And Satan said, this was given me. All that I'm telling you about, because Satan wasn't in charge of this. Adam was in charge. But he sold it because of the lust of his eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the proud of life. So brothers and sisters, I need us to hear this because it's Christ in you. It's Christ in me. It's the hope of glory. When you operate with a mind like that, then you don't go to the left and you don't go to the right. You abide in the word and the word abide in you. So when I look at you, I'm looking at Christ formed in you, the hope of glory. I'm looking at perfection in you. Every one of us should be presented or established even now perfected in Christ. That means perfect in knowledge, perfect in understanding. That means you're complete in your understanding about who you worship. Job was so perfect, so complete about who he worshiped that he would let nothing foul come out of his mouth. Miss Job walked in imperfection and she hadn't bond or pledged her life on that level because Job's wife said, curse God and die. Well, Job's wife said the same thing that Satan said to God. When I'm done with him, he's going to curse you to your face. And that's what Miss Job told her husband to do. Do you yet maintain or retain your integrity, your solidity? Yes, all that we're going, we've lost it all. We've lost the glory. No, your glory is not lost because you're having a trial. Your glory is not lost because you're going through. Your glory is an ongoing glory. Amen? It has a greater weight of glory into eternity. There's a book called A Portfolio on You. In the rich world, those who understand their stocks, those who understand their finances, those who handle their finances, they're called a portfolio where they look at where you have money at, where your investment is at, and they look at where it's going to be at this year, where it's going to be 10 years from now. How many know there's a portfolio on you? You're going to find that in the book of Malachi chapter 3 called a book of remembrance. When you keep serving God, you're going to talk about him in a way that you trust him, though you go through in life, okay? The glory, the honor, 
the abundance, the riches of Christ on you and in you. And even when the devil see you, he already know, I would like to get you, but you have him hedged in. How many know Satan will have loved to have gotten you, but God have you hedged in? And how many know sometimes God will move the hedge and let the devil get you? And how many know when that happened, the glory still should be there? When the hedge was moved from Job, that Job remained in a glorious state. That's why I admired his story, because he remained steadfast and unmoved in his commitment. Amen? So everything that's temporary, it comes, it goes, it fades. That's why Jesus encouraged everyone not to invest in this system where you lay up treasure where the moth and the, and, and, and the thieves can come in and steal, where, where something come and eat away. You, you can put it there, but something might eat it away. But everything that's laid up for you over in glory, nobody can touch it. It's waiting for you to get there. So hey, Satan hope he can get you to come on out. And I'm saying this because apparently we are grieving God because some of us is trying to walk with God and walk with your fraternity. Walk with your sorority. Walk as Ku Klux Klansmen, saying that God is in this. The Freemasonry talks about God. Most worship a master, ain't but one worship a master, and that's God. And I'm saying this, and I hope that everyone will go study, go read, go put up the fraternities, look at the seven images that we tote around in our pockets. Nothing wrong with it, as long as you don't love it. Nothing wrong with having a Benjamin Franklin. Just don't be in love with Benjamin. Nothing wrong with you listed at uh, uh, Grant. Just don't be in love with that $50 bill. That I'm going to take your life because I want what you have. Okay? The glory of God won't let you get indignant. The glory of God don't let you act up and act out. There's a decency even when there's a nail in your hand. There's a behavior that's so honorable towards God when there's spit in your face. Are you ready to pledge to God and take what you go through for the name of Christ? If you can let your sorority spit on you, if you can let those fraternities beat you and brand you, and you have a problem when God says, turn the other cheek, I warn you today, make up your mind who you're going to serve. Did you take a rite of passage with Christ to not only glory with him but suffer with him? Did you take a rite of passage to not only glory with him, but suffer with him? I had to make up my mind. For him I live, and for him I die. Suffering is a part, trouble is a part of the journey. But every day I have to wake up and walk in the glory. Every day I have to say, Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, rule and reign today. For thine is the kingdom. It's your kingdom today I'm looking to. Not man's kingdom, not the White House. Thine is the kingdom. Not only is the kingdom, it's the power, the authority of you today, God. You can tell the sun to stand still and it'll stand still. You can tell the water to go hither and thither and it'll go there. Who can become, who can do beyond that? Who can measure up to God Almighty? But we're cheating ourselves because you want to get into a position with somebody in the earth realm. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and understand this. Now, we read Revelation chapter 18, verse 1, because the church done got in bed. The church has got in bed. That foolishness that Paula White was doing, calling angels from Africa, that's contrary to doctrine. From Syria, they don't come. They come from God's throne room. They stand in God's presence. They are messengers of God, and they are servants of God, and they honor and obey God, not in foolishness or contrariness. Because Jesus realized, I cast myself down. Angels are going to bear me up. He said, you don't, you don't test and prove God's power or his character. So know who you're following. We got false apostles, false teachers, false evangelists. They're false. They're not real. They don't line you with the word. Okay? Paul said, I warn you. So saints, let us hear what God has to say to us, the body of Christ. And I pray you can hold on because your magazine or your portfolio as to what God has in store for those who keep the faith, those who love him. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. You are now being rich towards God. Every time you turn your cheek, your portfolio became bigger. You can't pay God money. God don't need money. God is not broke. But when you honor and obey him, look at your portfolio. Paul says, silver and gold, have I none? I don't have no money. He's telling that man today, I don't have the money, but what I do have, I have the glory of God and the honor of God upon my life. He said, rise up from there. You see, what God gives you when we are respectful, when we honor him, and we sell out. You're one God, you're one Lord, you're one faith, you're one baptism. Jesus had just baptized and committed his life and took right of passage into the kingdom. Now he's tempted of the devil to give a place to the devil. The devil hope now, can I have a right in your life? Can I have a place in your life? I give you a George. 
I'll give you a Benjamin. I'll give you a thousand one hundred dollar bill. You'd be surprised what a man would give in exchange of his soul. Now notice verse one. He says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the, and the earth was and the earth was lightened with his glory. Notice what he said in verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is what? Fallen. Babylon is a demonic system that's contrary with immorality, with idolatry. It's fallen. This system exists now. Babylon the great is what a lot of people are part of. It's about wealth. It's about success. It's about a glory. He says, he says, he says, Babylon the Great is falling. It's no longer in the same place of position. It was in a position. It has lost its position. Wealth is going to lose its position. The government that you trust in will one day be ruled by Christ. It says it's fallen to become the what? Habitation of devils. Babylon the Great. We're talking spiritual conversation here. And, be, and, and the whole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, he says in verse 4, jump down with 4. No, let, no don't, let, let me skip. He says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. See, Satan is trying to get Jesus now to drink of the wine, the pleasure. Satan is trying to get Jesus Christ at this time to drink the wine of fornication. Pleasure. There's something you're going to get in return. Everybody's starting to drink. He says, for all nations, nationalities, and people have drunk, consumed of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then it says, and the kings of the earth have done what? Committed fornication with her. You look at America. She's in bed with them too. Our government, laws is on the book, in the constitutional rights. How many see laws are changing? Because the constitution, those amendments can always be changed and amended. But the word of God cannot be changed. The word of God will not ever amend because you don't want to change or I don't want to change. God's word is totally solid. God's word is totally solid. One jot, one tittle. Prophecy is being fulfilled. God is calling us with a holy call, a heavenly call, and a high call. Yes, it has a standard. It has a standard of how you treat your brother. It has a standard of how you worship, a standard of how you live, how you give, how you invest. Everything you do about God has an eternal weight of glory. Everything you do for God has an eternal weight weight of glory. It's not an earthly glory. It's an eternal weight of glory. When you give your time, it's an eternal weight of glory. When you give your time, it's an eternal weight of glory. Because Christ brought you into his glory. Those things that bless God. Those things that honor God. Those things that respect God. When you do those things, it has an eternal weight of glory. Christ had no money. He had more when he was a child. When he was born, they brought him frankincense. They bought him all types of gifts. But when he grew up, he said, foxes have holes, birds have nests. I have no place to lay my head. Notice, because he wasn't investing in something temporary. His portfolio is so pleasing that God said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Your behavior, have your portfolio is what you're doing that makes you rich towards Christ. I want us to set our minds on things above, not on things in the earth. That's what Paul said. Set your affections on things above, not on things in the earth. So notice what it says. And the kings of the earth committed fornication with her. Immorality on every level. Kings, rulers of the earth, because they want what she offer. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. Then verse 4. Y'all read that with me. I heard another voice from heaven. I heard another voice from heaven. I was listening and I heard. If you heard, he heard a sound. He heard a voice from heaven. What did it say? Come out of her. Who? Stop right there. My people, if you are pledged to some organization, I need you to go back and look at it. Why did you join? It's going to give you passage through life. It's going to what helps you. 
But you got to look at, you don't brand yourself with an image. When you get dressed, you put the colors on. They're literally branding their bodies with hard iron because that's what the dark world called for. And you already seal with a seal in your forehead. The church then sold out to Freemasonry, Eastern stars, contrary to doctrine. That's why a lot of these man-made religion is man's brand of science when they talk about God. That's why we call ourselves Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostal. That's man's brand. That's man's philosophy. But when you read your Bible and you rightly divide the word of truth, then you get away from man's science, man's theory, man's teaching. And the Holy Ghost began to teach you and bring you to all truth. And then the conviction rests in your heart and in your mind. And I'm saying this to warn everybody because you want to be counted worthy to escape what's coming. There's some things coming your way physically. You want to be counted worthy to escape. There's things coming financially. All kinds of things is hitting the earth rim. But Lord, count me worthy because I'm being honorable. Count me worthy as I walk in your glory. Count me worthy to stand when I walk through the fires. Count me worthy, Father God, because I love you. And I love you first and foremost, according to the first commandment. I love you as the ruler of my heart and of my mind. Now, telling the people, God, come, come on, leave that place that you're in, right? And he said, that, be, that ye be not partakers of what? Of her sins. Of her sins. Yeah, you can't part it with the Alpha, Alpha, Delta. You can't hang out with them and, and honor them, then turn around with the same breath and say, hallelujah, praise God. You can't bang that stick to the most, most worshiper master, then turn around and say, glory to God. No. You can't bow down and serve too. That's why it's important that you read and study Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. You can't have two masters. You can't have two rulers. You can't have two authorities over your life. Satan is always trying to get everyone to sell out for a moment of what? Yes, you walk in there and you give the right handshake, you might get a job. You walk in there and you give the right code or whatever they give you to use as you go through life, yes, your friend that owned the bank might get you a job, but he can't give you eternal life. He can't give you peace at night. How many sororities do you think Bill Cosby was a part of? Um, fraternities, rather. Okay? Camilla Harris, she's a part of, of one. That's, that's her. But if she's listening today, I'll tell everybody, anything that's going to cause you to turn your back on the glory of God, the hope that's in you, then you need to let it go. Because it's going to require that you be committed to your brother or your friend or your, what you find with your sorority. Yeah, they can be ungodly because you, you're in bed with them. You have to honor your sister. You have to honor your brother. You know that he's a whoremonger, but he still have to honor him. You know that he's no good or she's no good, but you have to honor them because of that type of commitment that one will make with the world of darkness. So this is about learning. Now I want to take us again a little further because he said that you received not of her plague. Now there's some plagues coming. There's some things that's going to be. Now why is he telling us to move out from among her? Why do you think he's saying in this prophecy of the book of Revelation, he said, I heard a vo another voice from heaven. Come out from among her, my people. That's what the voice said. Leave, abandon. Come out. You're associating. You're setting yourself. You're involved with her. Come out from among her, right? Now, let's look. I want you to go with me. Take note of this. I'm giving you these scriptures, and I'm talking because I want you to go back and look at this over and over and over and get into your spirit because you're going to make up your mind. Go, keep parking in places that God can call you out of. Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man that don't stand, set, or walk with the ungodly. You know your fraternity, bro your fraternity brother. You know your sorority sister, your Sarah is not godly, but that's who you're hanging out with. You can't serve both of them. Okay? Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 in verse 15 through 17. 2 Corinthians, again, this is about a pledge that Satan is trying to get Jesus now to pledge. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he's trying to get Jesus to pledge. When you bow down and worship, when you let them beat you, you let them tie you up and urinate on you, the goat head, they tie you up, they blindfold you, whatever they do to you, 
Some of the things that you swear to secrecy. The church is guilty of the filth. That's why revelation I gave to you, because I'm warning you. For those who's listening, I'm warning you. Come out from among them. You want to be counted worthy to escape the sin and the plagues? You don't want to be a part of her sins, and you don't want to be a part of the plagues. Plague is that which is infectious. God has a judgment that he said, I heard another voice. I heard a voice crying. Come out from among her. Your glory is Christ in you. You're going to make it because Christ is in you. Doors going to come open because Christ is in you. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell, the saint don't own nothing. He's stolen everything. And he used you to leave your stewardship. Your stewardship, as Paul said, the, the dispensation that he has, he said, my stewardship as a minister of the gospel, that I let everybody understand the riches and the wealth that they have, which is in Christ Jesus. The devil has to walk by and respect you because he sees the glory on your life. Storms come through the land and come around your house, but it can't tear it up. And if it do something to you, you find that that storm worked together for the good because you love God. Everything worked together for the good of those who love God. Let the church say amen. Everything worked together because thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You wake up in the morning, you say, it's yours today, God. It's not man. It's not the devil. Thine is the kingdom. Your rule, your reign today in my life. The power in the glory. That's when David went to fight this giant. All he had was a slingshot in the name of the Lord. He didn't even have a sword, didn't need a sword. Because David used the giant sword to cut his own head off. When God is for you, when God is with you, you don't worry about what nobody's saying. You don't worry about who's in office. You pray for everybody that go into that White House. You are the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. You are God's chosen vessel. You make the difference by what you say out of your mouth. We don't speak down of a word. It's a set order we have to live with. Did you not know the Hebrew boys had to live there in Babylon? But God was with them, right? Joseph had to live there and fit with Pharaoh, but God was with him, right? You got to live in these United States of America, whether they be for you or whether they be for, against you. God is your everything. You walk in your wealth. Walk in your riches. Walk in your identity in Christ. Yeah, Snoop Dogg got money. He ain't going to be able to keep it. All the trucks in the world will not load up and walk behind his casket. Who's it going to be tomorrow? Satan is using him as a pawn. You see a lot of wealth, but you don't see many people with wealth. The rich people is what, 1%? The working class and people that don't have is a larger number. But it's amazing how Satan will make people rich. And that's why Jesus said you want to watch out for richness, okay? So 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 15. This is what it says. What concord has Christ with Belial? Huh? What concord? What accord? What, what, what harmony do we have here? He says, or what part has he that believes with an infidel? You can't have both. You can't have Alpha Phi and Jesus Christ. That's what I'm simply saying. You can't have the most worshipful master and Jesus Christ. You can't serve both. Matthew 6, 24. And I'm saying this because he's given me to say this and share with you. The storehouse that God has, which you have laid up, nobody can steal it from you. And every time you line with the word, your portfolio, your magazine on your life, God has it already written. And there's a book of remembrance, he calls it. In Malachi, he calls it a, the book of remembrance. Malachi chapter 3. Read it. Maybe in verse 13 or 14, somewhere in there, you can see there's a book of remembrance simply saying, I have a portfolio on you for those who make mention of me, those who are in, comp in, in compliance with my heart, those who walk in my glory. I have something great for you. For you. Notice, he says, and what concord has Christ with Belial, and what part has he that believes with in there? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? What, what agreement? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. 
And we're going to stop here and get ready to close. He, this is what he said. I want you to understand. That's why when you join yourself, if Christ had a joined himself and given a position, if Christ had a given a position to the devil that day when he was tempting him, then we would have a different story. So because he didn't, this is why he's called for us the hope of glory, Christ in us. Christ accomplished and finished the mission. Now, it's about all of us being presented perfect, present you perfect. Christ is called the author and the finisher of your faith. When something's perfect, it's complete. You're not an incomplete. You are supposed to be complete in knowledge, complete in understanding, complete in wisdom. That's from God. So therefore, as you focus on perfecting, like Job was so perfect, he was so complete in his understanding, he could take the pain and still worship God. Nothing that he went through, Job did not let that, he didn't let that interrupt the relationship he had with God. He didn't let that come in between him and God. This devil came in through the first Adam, interrupt the relationship. But the last Adam said no. He ended up telling that devil, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen? What glory do you want to operate in? The temporary glory? Oh, there's a glory for being an apple, apple five. There's a glory. Sarah, Sarah, to your brother and your sister, whatever they're saying. And I don't know a whole bunch about it, but I know enough to talk to you about it today, that you as the body of Christ, you can't have an agreement with the temple of God and with idols. Okay? You are the temple of the living God. Notice this. It says, this is what you are. You are the temple of the living God. You are the dwelling place of the living God. He says, as God has said, I will dwell in them. Y'all paying attention to it. You need to keep your mind. You need to keep your mind. Listen now. God said, I dwell in them. Do you not know your temple? Do you not know your temple? Do you not know when Christ baptized, he committed his life? He took passage. He took right of passage into the kingdom. He took right of passage into the kingdom. Do you not know when you got saved and baptized and gave your life, you took passage, or you got a right of passage into the Messiah and his anointing and his blessing. That's why you're called heir of God and join us with Christ Jesus. You took right of passage. This city, God is over it. I don't care Republican or Democrat. God is over my life. Okay? Ooh. I need to give you these three things before I close. I, I, I'm going to come back to this later. You can read it. We'll talk on this on Wednesday night. But let's go over to Jeremiah, and this is a good piece because I want you to see Jeremiah, Old Testament, chapter 9. Jeremiah, chapter 9. And Jeremiah says something. I think it's in... Yes, ma'am, you there. Oh, uh, no, 23. Ah, they're going to tell you how to glory. Y'all got me? You're going to glory. You walk out here today, glory. You, you, tomorrow, glory. He says, thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his what? In his wisdom. Okay? In his faculty of reasoning and thinking and pro processing things. Don't, don't let that person who, have, who think he's skilled and slick and sly, skillful and intelligent of the earth realm, he said, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Yeah, you have power, you have authority, don't glory in it. Your strength, don't glory in it. Your forces, don't glory in it, okay? He said, let not the rich man glory in his riches. Array yourself, adorn yourself, and think well of yourself. This night, fool, your soul might be required. Amen? If you're going to glory, glory in eternal wealth, eternal blessing. The last piece, verse 24 says, but let him that glories glory in this, that he understands and knoweth me. Amen? You're going to de uh, decor yourself or uh, decorate yourself with excitement and brag and boast and get excited that when they run around saying, my sorrow, 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 whatever they say to their sisters in the, in the uh, sororities, they shout, they brag, they boast, whatever they do, whatever the Eastern stars do and bumping the stick whatever the Freemason do and whatever they are doing. But what you are understanding today, he said, but let him that glories glory in this, that he understand and know me. He have a relationship with me. He have knowledge of me. He's been forewarned of me. He says, and that I am the Lord, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. 
For in these, in these things I delight, says the Lord. Now, we'll come back to this because, see, how many know when it says judgment, God's saying, look, I want you to know who loved you, who done grace you, who done gave you mercy. I want you to know who have made a decision that you would live and not die. I want you to know as to what I've done for you. I've gone ahead to show myself strong. That was my judgment on your behalf. The battle that you was fighting, that battle's not yours. I took that battle. That was my judgment about you because you start glorying in me, not in your brother, your sister, your man in the earth realm. Okay? Satan wanted a system set up, but Jesus said, I don't want nothing to do with it. Amen? So today, brothers and sisters, I want you to read it because I'm going to go back on Wednesday night. I'll go a little slower because I love this piece right here. I glory all the time. I brag all the time. I boast all the time in the Lord. Amen? And I boast in his judgment. I boast in his loving kindness and his tender mercy. I brag about how much God loved me. I want you to brag about how much God loved you. I want you to remain in your place and don't give a place to the devil. Please don't do so. But glory like you never glory before, but glory in the Lord. When you glory, say, thine is the kingdom. When you glory, say, thine is the power. When you glory, say, thine is the glory. Nobody else get the glory. Amen? I want to say to you, that you be encouraged. I need you to go study Christ, the hope of glory in you. I want you to understand it's bigger and deeper than the color of your skin. I don't care who don't like you. When God made a decision about you and your life and your future, I want you to hold on to Almighty God and don't let go. So God bless you today and God keep you is my prayer. I pray you study. I don't want you just to believe what I said. If you get aggravated because I'm talking about these sororities, well, God bless you. God bless you. Just go read. Don't believe. Don't, don't turn. I'm just warning you because the sins and the plagues that's coming, God's going to judge everything. If he's not your Lord when you lay down, why can, how can he be your Lord when you get up? Amen? Now, I'm not sharing you with nobody. We read some of that. I'm going to go back again. Your body belongs to him, and he don't share with no one else. Okay? He's not competing for you. You're going to choose him or you're going to choose mammon. Amen? God bless you. For souls that's not saved, minds and hearts that's not changed. The door of heaven is always open, and he knock at your door that you'll open up so he can bring you into the kingdom on the leadership of his Holy Spirit. He hoped this day that you would consider your ways and turn from your wicked ways and turn back to him. That's for the sinner, the sinner man. If your name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life, here's an opportunity for you to come and repent and have a change of heart, change of mind, change of lifestyle. Transgressors. People like you and me in the church know what's right, but do wrong. This is an opportunity because the blood is running warm in your veins. You're clothed in your right mind. You have your health and strength. But this time tonight, your soul could be required of you. There was ten virgins. Five was wise, five was foolish. And I say this because you have a lamp, but you don't have oil. Because you plan the food. Yeah, Miss Joe was called a fool because you know right, but you talk wrong. You live wrong. So I call you because it's my responsibility to warn you while the blood is running warm in your vein, you have your health and your strength. This is a good day to come back home. This is a good day to come to yourself like the prodigal son who said, I've sinned against heaven, I've sinned against my father. I'm going back home just to be a servant. And you come back, you see what God has in store for you for living. Though you lived a reckless life, yet he's still ready to help us up at a time of grace and mercy. This is what I ask you to do. If any way I could be a help and a blessing to you to further understand, feel free to contact us. God bless you. Good night, good day, good Sunday. And that you walk in the glory that's full of nothing but blessings. Good night.